In this video, I'll show you a few really quick wins when it comes to working with dates. I'll show you how to extract the month, the week number, the weekday, and the specific day so that you can drill down your data sets better and more efficiently. So let's dig right in. I am going to take 8 seconds to ask you to do a few things. I provide as much information as I can for free through my YouTube videos. My ask would be that you support me by subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell notification. I'd also ask you to hit that like button and leave a comment below at the end telling me what date formula you are going to be using. Alright, let's learn how to work smarter and not harder. In columns A and B, you have the total sales from specific days over the past couple of years. That's the only information you were given. However, your manager wants you to drill it down into sales by year, month, week, and weekday. That can be overwhelming if you don't know all the tricks of the trade. Luckily, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to add a column for each of those breakdowns and then show you the formula for each. After I've got them added, I'm going to turn this information into a table by highlighting the entire data set and then selecting Format as Table from the ribbon in the Home tab. I like to choose black and white with headers. You'll want to ensure to check the box for my table has headers and then click OK. By turning this data into a table, I'll only be required to add formulas in the first row and then they will be automatically calculated for the entire column in the table. Alright, so let's check out year first. That one is pretty simple. There's actually a specific formula for that one. I just type equals year and then opening parentheses select cell A2 as the cell we want to extract the year from, and then close the formula with a closing parentheses. Now when I hit enter, you'll notice the entire column autofills with the year from the respective date in that row from column A. Now we can move on to the month column. You can do this in one of two forms. You can grab the month number or the month name from the date. I'll show you how to get the month number first. That's pretty simple too. Just type equals month, then opening parentheses, then select A2 as the cell to extract the month from. Now just close it with the parentheses and hit enter. You should see it autofill in column D with the month number for the respective date in column A. But what if your boss prefers the month name instead to take the thinking out of it? We'll use a text formula for that one. The text formula converts a number, or in this case a date, to text according to a specified format. So I'll start the formula by typing equals text, then an opening parentheses. Now I need to choose the cell I want to extract and turn it into text. I'll choose A2 again. Now I'll type a comma to get to the next portion of the formula. Now it's asking for the format. You'll choose the pattern by which to format the number and close it with quotations. In this instance, I'll choose opening quotes M, 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 which means I want to extract the month name. Then a closing quote and a closing parentheses. Now hit enter and you should see it autofill the entire column again. Pretty cool, right? Now I'll run another formula to find out the week number, which is 1 through 52, that this date falls into in its given year. So if you think about this easily, you would say that January 1st falls into the first week of the year, whereas December 31st falls into the 52nd week of the year. In cell E2, I'll type equals week and um, and then an opening parentheses. Now I'm going to choose A2 as my serial number. The second part of the formula is asking for what day of the week your week starts on. If you don't hit the space bar after your comma, it'll actually tell you the number you should type for each option. I almost always choose 1, since in my mind all weeks start on Sunday. Now I'm going to close the equation with a closing parentheses and hit enter and watch it autofill. The last formula that I need to set up is the one that will tell me what day of the week the date in column A is. Much like the month formulas we went with, you can do this in two separate ways. You can set it up by the number of the day of the week, meaning Sunday would be 1, Monday would be 2, and so on. Or you can set up a formula to get to the day of the week in text. I'll show you both. For the number, you just type equals weekday, then opening parentheses, then select A2, then comma, and if you don't hit the space bar, it'll give you some options here again. I'm going to choose 1 because, again, Sunday is always the beginning of the week for me. Then I'll add a closing parentheses and hit enter to watch it autofill. I better show you how to do it in text form in case your boss likes to see it that way instead. This will work similar to the text formula we set up for the month name. Equals text, then opening parentheses, choose A2 as the serial number, then comma, now open quotes, but this time we're going to type D for days, D, 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 then closing quote and a closing parentheses to close the equation. Now just watch it autofill to show the dates. 
Now if I want to get really fancy, I can easily tell a story by setting up a pivot table. I'm going to run through this quick, but if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to work with a pivot table, you can click on the card appearing at the top of the video, or I'll put it as a link in the description below. I'm going to choose to put this pivot table on the same sheet so you can see how easily we can tell a story with this data now. I'll drag the sales down to the values field and change it to currency. Now I can drill this data down any way I want. First, I'll look at each year. Then I'll break it down by month. Or I can get rid of both of those and look at it weekly. Or I can look to see if there's a day of the week that has more sales than the others. You can see that sometimes you're required to tell a story using data that is limited in the amount of information you can extract from it. This just means you need a little bit of know-how and a little bit of creativity. I hope you learned something from this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified each time I publish a new video, which is about once a week. Also, don't forget to comment on what date formula you are going to use. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.